Big I wanna say thanks and big up to Grassroot Boxing. Go follow, mash the subscribe button, big up and hey, follow me on YouTube as well. <laughs> I did a wet box in that cup. Thanks. Alright, we're just um picking this interview up from the from the people from the girls back two weeks ago, I think it was. Yeah, two weeks ago. Um alright, so what were um, what we we'll do is we just want to like talk a little bit like, like your early life and what have you. Obviously, um, it, it's been quite a bit of a story, really, isn't it? Really? So yeah, uh, it's been it's been a difficult one. I got myself involved in a lot of trouble growing up. Yeah, and that's what I did. Just gonna make this yeah, sorry. I've had a lot of coverage um, from national press, national news, because it's, it's very current as well. Stabbing the you know, crime that's going on right So now. when you were like kind of at school and stuff, obviously, you know, it's been well documented that you know, maybe got into a bit of trouble and what have you. And, and was that like, you know, was that because of the people hanging around with in the area and that, that yeah, sort of thing? And that definitely played, played a huge part in me getting involved in all of this mess. Yeah. And I would say I would say it was a lot to do with the environment and obviously um, bad company. Yeah. That was one of the two main variables that affected my decisions, my actions. Yeah, so if you just um don't mind just telling us a little, you know, a little bit like kind of what happened in the area. So um, it was a Saturday night around that time in my youth I used to go to parties every week, every Friday, every Saturday. That was the motive. Like, it was all about going out on the weekend and if you didn't go out, you would just hear about the stories of what happened last weekend. You just felt like you missed out. So I tended to never want to miss out. So I always wanted to be there. Yeah. No matter what happened because it just it just felt like I was a part of the story. Part of the scene kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. And and I went we went to a party. This was in Orchid Road. Cut the long story short, we came outside the party, we were just discussing about it, but it wasn't really that good, to be honest. And the guy came out and started asking for everybody's phone and started with like, Because he lost his phone in there, what I found out afterwards. Oh, is it? Yeah. And just trying to jack it. Exactly, so he was like, give me your phone. And everybody was just like, hesitating. Everybody that hesitated, he was stabbed. He ended up stabbing three of us. He asked me for my phone, I said no. And I didn't have a phone. <laughs> But it was just more about like ego. You know, you have to have a lot of ego and pride. You know, to was he with like a little crew or was it literally just... No, he was just by himself. But he would, obviously did have a, a crew, of course, but yeah. he was by himself. So yeah, and then he stabbed me in my chest. And I just felt the blood trickle. Felt like I took a breath. From did it? Um, it's going to sound probably a bit of a stupid question, but did it? Was it one of the things where it hurt, or was it one of them where you just realised it was kind of? Yeah, it was like a shock pain, it was like a shock pain. And once it touched me, I just I felt, I felt a certain way. I knew it was stabbing, but I just didn't know how deep, how how severe it was. So when I felt the blood leaking down my abdominal, and it didn't stop, and even after like two minutes, that's when I knew that I think it's serious. And then, and then obviously you went to hospital and Exactly what happened after I, I fainted. I fainted. I woke up my friend slapped me and said, Richard, wake up, wake up. And that's when I kind of regained consciousness. But because I had internal bleeding surrounding my lungs, I was really I had short breath. Very, very short. Like me just to articulate a sentence. It would take a lot. I would have to breathe. Get my energy. It's like imagine doing sprints. You're just trying to get your energy, to get your breath back. That's how I would just say in the sentence. So I had to be operated on straight away, like ASAP. And uh, one of my aunties came over, signed me. They thought my mum was in the country. I'm not sure she was on a busy trip. So you can imagine how traumatized it was for, for my mum. Like, Anyway, she signed the documentary, uh, the document, and then after I woke up with my dad, with oxygen mark in my hand, and then my dad was all of just watching me. Could you, when you woke up, were you like, what's happened kind of thing? What could you remember? Uh, you know what? I actually remember being on the operating table. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I remember waking up. Sporadically, he was just waking up, drifting back off, waking up, drifting back off, and feeling the pain of them. I was feeling the intense pain because they had to cut in, in my muscle, in between my ribs, to put a tube in there to drain the pain. 
so I can feel the pain even though they drug me up. And I was waking up, I just remember myself just like, but then just drifting off again. It's just the, the anesthetic was a, it was powerful for us, but they didn't do it. <laughs> they didn't put enough because I could feel it. I could feel, I swear to you, I, could, I remember myself waking up, feeling the pain, you know, it's agony, agony. It's worse than me to stand. Because you should remember they come through muscle and cartilage is like putting the tree And then anyway after that I woke up and I took I was on a joke for, for a while. It was a crazy experience. This doesn't happen. Let's just say people don't survive this type of this type of uh, this type of no no way, no no chance. So it's a reason that you did and uh, that's, that's that's what, that goes back to my purpose. I believe that I'm here for a reason. I believe that everything that's happened to me so far in my life was meant to be. Because the, if, I, if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have such a pull on different individuals, especially youngsters coming from my background, and have such an effect when I talk. Whereas another boxer is not doing as well. He can speak, but that will fall on deaf ears because they can't relate. But with me, I'm an actual reference now. And it's interesting. No, I didn't wake up and plan this. It's just, it's just my passion for me. You know what? I went through this and I don't want no one else to go through this. I didn't have anybody else to talk to me about you know, making the right decisions and avoiding things like this. So let me just take that upon myself to do the same and help save some, some lives potentially. I remember the last time we spoke with my girls and it was um when you won the title and you know you're going to the schools and like, the community centres and that and it's it's and you you know you, you just said if, if you could just help one person like come off the streets and what have you but you know from, from what's happened it sounds like a lot of kids you know it's just seeing what they've done and it's nice to, to realise that you're actually doing something good for the community. Yeah that's what's about that's, you know, that's what I, I believe that's what it's about giving back to the community helping others. That's what life is all about. And if I can help, then why not? No, it doesn't it does take a little bit of my time. But the reaction from these kids and these students that I talk to is priceless. There's no price in people. And I get messages all, all day every day on social media. Like Richard, I really look up to you on my eye. I spoke about you in school sending me videos of them like showing the teachers stuff my achievements and stuff. This is really humbling, really humbling. And it makes me want to do better. It makes me want to achieve more. Because if I can achieve more, which I know I will, imagine the effect I can have on imagine the, the whole you nation or go on to you know win more titles and what have you you know the effect that you can have on that's that's what it's all about. Um, I'm here for a short period of time. I know life is not forever, so I, I need to make the most out. The other day I was on, I went to visit a Joe at the mountain, and I, I came in through the back door, you know, hanging around and talking to um, inmates mm. on the wings. And everything. It's, it's unheard of, but the, the word travelled so much, and I found, I saw some of my friends that I actually used to hang out with on the streets for like, all them years ago, 10 years. And, just so humbling. They managed to look at yourself from German to see me. It's just, it's really humbling. It makes them feel like it, it gives them hope that you know anything is possible. Because I was in that that same position as you. I was there as well. <laughs> I was there one time in my life. I, you know. So if I can turn things around, then you can. Too. I'm just an example of reference. Basically. Just going back, you know when you um, kind of wake up in the hospital and obviously you've got your family there, obviously when you started getting better, what, what was their, um, what, what was the kind of like saying to you, like, obviously, my family, yeah, did they know, like, the people that you're hanging around with, and, you know, obviously, you know, I mean, it must have been such a shock. To be honest, I actually don't remember them, like, lecturing me too much. They were just more happy that I survived, because it was such a, uh, a dangerous incident, it's like, the, Survival rate is really, really low, really low for that type of service. Just more happiness and you know, just 
just want me to be careful next time I don't go out. But me being 15 years old, it was just an experience. Uh, I got tons of attention after that from my family. And they were like so busy at the time, you know, working and trying to hold up their family. So that's how I kind of found myself in certain situations at the same time. Just because of boarding, I told them I didn't have nothing to do. And I found myself in the wrong places for a long time. After, after that happened, is that at the point in life you think like oh, I've got to kind of change my life a little bit? I've got to... No. When that happened, it was more of an experience for me. I survived and just wanted to get better and get back at it again. Like, but it was more of curiosity. It was more just experiencing the street life, street culture, getting to know everybody, and then it kind of, I kind of got deeper in after a while, even after the seven. 16, 17, 18, I said you went to special time in prison as well. Yeah, yeah, I've, well, so I got remanded. I got remanded. Basically, there's one guy, he, he pointed us out in the ID parade, and that's all you need to do to put somebody in prison. He made fake false statements. It was all lies because the guy sold a car to us on finance, and he basically robbed us. So when I got stopped in the car, the car got taken away. A stabbing happening around the area at one time where we was filming a video we were rapping and then he just basically all of us were arrested and picked us out and I didn't that's why I went to prison. So I, I didn't do it, I didn't commit no crime or anything like that. We were just on remand and I was in there for about two months and two weeks or something, two, three, just under three months. And it was just an experience as well but I concluded that that's not my life. I had to, listen, it's crazy. I was in there for a short period of time and that's what it was. I've never been back. That's not I don't really like that. I don't want to go in that direction. I want to do other things. It's, it's depressing. In general, it's more of a psychological battery that you take away. Well, at what point do you think you realise you're like, right, do you know what, this is it. I'm, I'm really going to have to kind of stop all this. Like street stuff and just. I think it was tell. around 20, 20, 21. I thought, you know what, I want to try something different. So, I've given my parents tons of stress. The benefits and. The benefits from the street life is it's not too. It's not profitable. It wasn't too profitable. Like quite a short life as well, kind of. Exactly. The more of the intangibles. Like the street credibility is what we gained, but apart from that, we weren't too intelligent. We didn't have the right guidance anyway to even make um, make something of ourselves mm -hmm. in that type of lifestyle. We were you know, really stupid. <laughs> we were really stupid. And that's when I realised, you know, I need to try something different. And then you went to uni, boxing, boxing as well. Boxing was. Uh, or a rule, um, one of the reasons, the main reasons why. Yeah, but my, uh, again, how, uh, how, how you just got to start take boxing seriously? I started taking boxing seriously a year and a half ago. So I, I did it, but I was in the gym two times a week. I was going to the championships and doing pretty well for what, you know, my training, what I was putting in. And, you know, I, I conclude one day, all I need to do is be in the gym and that's it. I'll win all the championships. Sometimes, you know, the streets pull me back and I find myself waiting. But it's just, it's discipline. It's, you get away from it. That's what I noticed. And I wasn't putting in the work. And then that's when I went to start studying. Start studying after I graduated. That's when I thought, let me turn, turn over. After a year, I turned pro, and then I started training. And mm -hmm. even then, even after I turned pro, I wasn't really taking it seriously. I'm taking it more seriously now. Um, when you started to take boxing up really seriously, what, what was your like, family? They, they kind of happy that you... you of course. Changing my life around, going to, to uni. Going to uni, uni as well, they must have been really proud. Of course. They, they just wanted a peace of mind. Peace of mind is priceless. But you've got peace of mind, very functional. Even as a fighter, you don't have a peace of mind, you can't perform properly. And I gave them a peace of mind, finally. 
but you didn't have to worry about what Richard was doing, where Richard was at 10 p.m., where Richard was in trouble. Yeah. 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 So, it's um, obviously back in those days, I'm sure. So, I mean, I, when I was growing up, I was, you know, no mobile phones really back then, you know what I mean? So, I'm just like, I can't really, um, can't really uh, so Back then, we used to whistle for each other yeah. or pay for <laughs> We're so, um, so we would go to our, each other's houses at a set time, like maybe like 12, 1 o'clock. That's back in the day, people used to yeah. knock for each other. Yeah, yeah, things were different then. Well, not even knock, just literally roll in. It was just, uh, the Facebook came along after. It's yeah. Like online. I think, was it, was it MySpace? MSN was first. I said MSN. I remember MSN. Was first, which was, you know, MySpace was the first type of social network yeah. globalising everybody. And then, uh, yeah. After follow but MSN Facebook. was the one, wasn't it? Yeah, MSN, like, yeah, MSN was pre Facebook. Oh, well, MySpace yeah. at the same time. Yeah, but I was like, like church and girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't know how they looked. Yeah. 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 Kids don't know where they're born these days. Yeah, I was going to go on top of it. That was my fault, sorry about that. Um, I was going to ask you more things before about the. Um, oh, no, no. Was about your university. Oh yeah, I was going to ask what you studied at university. Yeah, I studied marketing, communications, and advertising. Oh, is it? So what, what was your idea with that? I just I wanted to do something because I'm a. I like to describe myself as a businessman. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do something where it didn't hold me to one type of field. I could just work in this type. Of, like if I was to work, mm -hmm. I'd be able to use this this skill acquired for a different type of field. Yeah, whether it's um, sports, whether it's business finance, I can use the same skill. So already you're thinking outside of the box. Once box is over, you're thinking like the next kind of career. And, um, and it was. Um, do you think it's one of those things that maybe a lot of young boxers and fighters and coming up don't really think about? They, you know, they're just thinking about the present. There's really should be thinking like outside because obviously one day boxing is going to finish, isn't it? You know. <laughs> You know, a lot of, to be honest, a lot of these boxers, they're very good, they're very talented, but they're not intelligent. And that's what kind of, you know, that's where I, I try to help bridge the gap and give people advice. But there's only so much that you can give, and obviously, I have my own life to focus on myself. But, you know, um, it's all about planning all the way to the end. Boxing is not forever, it's a short end sport. You make what you make, get out. Accomplish what you, what you want to, you, you know, your dreams, and, mm. and and that's it. After that, that's when your new career starts. Like, what you, what you got? What you got? Could you see yourself like doing what Dillian does? Do you like managing or you know, becoming a coach? I don't know. Actually, um, I do get a lot of um, people asking me to coach their kids and stuff now, but I still can't find the time. Mm. Me train, train myself, you know, competing myself, but. I do want to get into a lot of different types of businesses. I built my own foundation already. I go to different schools, deliver um, talks, and programs, go into jails as well already. So that's one thing on the side that's just building. Like, you know, we planted those seeds uh, a while back and it's growing through me, through me at the moment. And I was thinking of getting into pun being a pundit as well. Sky. I think it'd be pretty good at that. Yeah. Good, you know. Benaj just literally says it how it is. Oh, I quite like. And that. he's a really good analyst. Yeah, very good analyst. Yeah. Um, Spencer, Freer, I don't remember when he came on the scene. Oh yeah, Spencer. Yeah, I like. It's Spencer. different. He had somebody with this. I like his type of play podcast. Yeah, it was a he had this, this slang words would come through every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's this? Because first, the first time I saw him on that toe to toe was uh, I was like. Um, He's not like the, the corporate, you know, like, do you know what I mean by like, like that corporate? It's very, you like, you, you, you kind of speaking in a certain yeah. way, and not like how we're probably speak off camera or something, you know, you try and kind of be a bit more professional on that. But he's, a, he's just raw. He's more like, I'd like to describe him as street corporate, you know, street corporate, no, that's more yeah. suitable. But yeah, I, I like it. He's changed all the time. He's changed all the time. But the first time I heard him do, um, you know, commentate, it was interesting, it was interesting, it was, it was humorous, it kept me engaged. I was like, what is he saying? What's he going to say next time? Yeah. Okay, just, uh, just back down. Um,
Just uh, okay, just moving on. Uh, you know, uh, we've done quite a bit of time, so I know you're going to be left as well. Um, so you've got the fight coming up with Tommy MacArthur. Uh, MacArthur, 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 yeah. Um, talk to me about that fight. It's, it's quite, it's quite a tough fight. I mean, he's gone the distance with Matt Yaskin, um, so he obviously knows he's, he's, he's tough and he's doing all it. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna, that's an interesting fight on paper. You know, Tommy, I remember watching Tommy. He's been around. He's another name. Been, his name has been around. You know what I mean? It's been around, but, but it's, it's like it disappears. Yeah, every now and again. He didn't really have much exposure or yeah. just gone back to like fighting some four rounders. Yeah, exactly. So that's a bit weird. He's, I just feel like um, he had, you know, a lot. I don't know whether he wasn't managed properly or I don't know, but his, his career is, was always on the up and it just plummeted down, up and down, it's weird. But I saw him like in the Commonwealth game that you know he caught my eyes and I like this type of style and he likes to bounce and let his hands go, counter punches. So yeah, he, he's good and plus he's got a hot two back so I think especially from that fight with uh what's it with Matty Asma. So yeah. You know, he's Irish, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Irish. So he's going to be a tough one, isn't he? Yeah, well, he could be, he could be, but... But then it's about yeah. you concentrating on, yeah, it's exactly. not about, like, concentrating. Well, it's it could be an easy one. Yeah. It could be an easy one for me, you never know. You never know with these, these guys, because, to be honest, these guys are, are talented, but, as I said before, man, hard work, um, hard work will always be talented. Mm. Telling us to work with hard work if they want to be something else. But from the interviews that I've seen, you know, he seems quite deluded at the same time. You know, he's, he's thinking, he thinks it's all level. It's weird. I don't know. But listen, all I've got to do is focus on myself. And I believe we're going to get through that fight. We're going to get through the fight. We're going to get the W. And we're going to move on. Uh, right, there was uh, just a couple of things I was just going to ask you about um, fights kind of coming up. Um, what do you make it? What do you make of the whole AJ not fighting like Wilder and uh, Fury situation? I mean, Actually, do, do you do what? I'm not sure if you want to. Kind of no, I feel talk. common. Yeah. 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 I believe um, AJ wants to fight. Yeah. Definitely. AJ didn't have a problem fighting. Him. I believe they just got a lot of heart and so I believe, I believe that he can beat, he can definitely beat them. But I just felt that the business side of things has calmed his brand slightly because in the public eye, they're probably thinking he's just that scared. He doesn't want to fight them. When in reality, it's, it's the opposite, it's not true. Yeah. But the business side of things, the lazy and obviously uh, this type of, and builds the type of uh, perception that he's not interested in or he doesn't want that. Small. But yeah, I, I reckon that would, that would, I think that fight will take place this year, the end of this year. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas crack. Like one. And just in regards to your division, obviously, um, obviously not looking past um, Tommy McCarthy, but if you get past him, uh, is it maybe would you go for a British title or something like that, or is it now you just want to go get get those know. big ones? I don't know. Like with me. All I care about is just winning, you know, fight, fight by fight, round by round. And if the, I, f I feel like I'll go to get the British, I'll go and get the British from the Commonwealth. We're trying to make that the way can match up at one point. But then it's all a better opportunity for the Lawrence, which you can't knock for. But yeah, I think that's the best way to develop, build, and eventually go on to the European level. And the world stage is the best way to do it. Where, whereas we could go straight for the world. There's been, there's been a lot of boxers that have done that, like Nigel Ben, who else, Frank Bruno. They, did, they didn't even fight for British title, but a lot of people didn't know this. They just went straight that route, European and, and Worlds. But obviously, the, the best way, they say, is to do it step by step. Southern area, English, British. Like someone like Billy Johnson would be a perfect example of that. He did it step by step properly. Because, for example, look at Ted Cheeseman the other day, you know, Garcia, it felt like he was out of his, yeah, exactly. his depth. It's quite tough watching it, though. Yeah. Uh, exactly. same, same Lewis Ritson as well, wasn't it? Lewis Ritson had exactly. the same. Exactly. So it seems like that's, that's, a, that's another level, mm -hmm. the European level. 
and obviously in the different worlds, which is a whole different level. There's levels of boxing. Yeah. So it's all about being humble and just building. That's why I, I'm, I'm always humble. At the same time, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to punch your head off your shoulders at the same time. You know, I'm humble outside, but when we get in the ring, I'm a demon. I'm a monster. But outside of the ring, you're, you're yeah. really nice. nice That's job. how it should be. It's, uh, and it's been a pleasure kind of spending some time with you. So, um, yeah, again, thank you so much thank for like, allowing me to come down. Um, but before we go, do you want to like, shout out any more shout outs? For, um... Yeah, no, stay tuned, stay tuned for the journey. Follow me on Twitter at r underscore rep, or my last name, and it's the same on Instagram. And I've got my YouTube channel as well, Richard Rep, or subscribe to that. I've got some more content. I've been slacking with content to be honest, but I've been in the gym where I should be focusing on getting the performances right. So yeah, stay tuned man.